Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We have uh, taken a little exhale here after losing and after the Eric DaCosta press conferences and the John Harbaugh press conferences to at least take a couple of days here after insurrections and inaugurations and all this stuff, COVID, to just appreciate the fact that one night in Tampa, this happened. Head coach Brian Billick, our partner on behalf of the Living Classrooms Foundation. I went from paper to the real thing. I got the, I got the real thing here. I know, that's pretty good. Coach, you, you're still looking young. I, I want to make comparisons. Uh, uh, you know, you notice there's not as much hair there and a few more wrinkles, but uh, it's fun to think about that time. All this lockdown and pandemics moved you back. I mean, you look like you're on the Peloton or something. How are you? First things first. How's life? It's been a little while. We haven't caught up in a Let's while. Get, I don't bug you too much about football because we've talked about all sorts of stuff around here. You know, like everybody, it's it's adjusting to it. We've moved to Columbus where my grandkids are, uh, which has been great being close to them. Uh, but How's like your math tutoring? Going okay? Uh, doing great. Doing great. Like I said, as long as I stay one chapter ahead, I'm good. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to watch, uh, really particularly focused on the kids, them processing all this. And that's, you know, that's our biggest concern is, can you imagine? I mean, I'm old enough. I remember the tuck and duck under the, uh, under the, uh, uh, in school, you know, when, because the nuclear bombs were going to go off and the nuclear arms race and, and then losing friends in the Vietnam war and, you know, all the things that you have to process when you're young. And, and I look at my grandkids and kind of wonder, okay, how are they processing all this? Cause everything's in reference, whether it's how they're around their friends, what they do, the way they're learning now. Um, it's, well, they also see people scaling the uh, the walls of Congress like Spider Man too. So I, you can't yeah. keep that away from kids either. I mean, correct. And how you process all that, and so it's uh, yeah, it's it's a lot. Coach Billick is here. It is um, uh, twenty years on the twenty eighth. Uh, we're a couple of hours out on that here. Uh, you know, you and I spent a lot of time that week. The, uh, I, all of it comes back to me, you know, like the hotel at the Hyatt West Shore and the Whiskey Joe's parties and the friends like Bobby Nick, who's departed us and friends who were in, and teammates of yours who were on the team who've departed. All of that. But 20 years later, what does it all mean? Uh, you, you know, that you have that trophy behind you. What does it mean? Yeah, when it's when 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 it and obviously I've talked a lot about it as we we come up to the date and we're doing a thing with the Ravens uh, uh, via Zoom and when you hear that for the first time, twenty years ago, you think, God dang, that 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 was and it, yet it feels like like yesterday. Uh, and and we did a thing the other day and, and Ray and Jamal was on and and. Uh, Rod Woodson, and it was great, you know, just to, and Tony Saragusa to kind of reminisce about and some of the things and what a special time it is, and it is a special time. Obviously, that month leading up to the Super Bowl, as a coach, there's none better because your team is so full. They'll, they'll do whatever you want. Well, you have, if I'd have said, go out in the snow and make a bunch of snow angels that had gone out without question and flopped around the snow and come back in, what are you going to do now, coach? I mean, it's, it's a rare, which is, you know, rare time for pro athletes. And, and so, yeah, that's the thing. And then the week down there is like no week you've ever experienced before in the game itself. And uh, yeah, everything about it. It's just, it's fun to think back, but it is amazing to think back that it has been 20 years. From a football perspective in preparing for the game and all that, and I wrote a book about this, right? So uh, Larry King plugged my book, by the way. I had to go back 20 years ago. Larry King called my book a good read. You were a part of that, Coach, so I do appreciate that. But, you know, going back in the, the preparation for all of that and the way that you sort of laid out this almost militarized, this is where we're going to be, this is what we're going to do, this is how we're going to pack, this is, who you know, how we're going to get there and all of that, uh, the the – preparation for winning and I guess I'm speaking to your leadership skills um the greatest accomplishment in your life not your wife your children right or you know whatever that you did this and so many others haven't done it when you go back to looking at the things you did to prepare to lead up to that any thoughts about having that skill set at that point in your life to well, go just, do it because you tried to do it a whole bunch of times you only had once it's just what you do. I mean, I remember very vividly that, you know, we had gone through and the thing about my mantra all year long was we've got to earn the right to think of ourselves in this way, which means every week you got to win. You got to do the little things and the banning of the P word until we're in the playoffs, all that kind of stuff that we did was all, and it was very transparent, but it was all about, no, we're, we're going to stay focused on what we're doing now. What's the t today? It's, it's one game at a time. No matter what question you ask it's well, all we're focusing on is the next game. 
and and so that you foster that. Well, then then we you know beat San Diego and we're in the playoffs, and it dawned on me very clearly because I kind of stayed up all night to do it because I wanted to have it the next day for the players to know, guys, we know what we're doing. There is a plan. So we beat San Diego. The P word is gone. And, and then the very first meeting, the next meeting, I lay out the schedule that shows every practice, every meeting, every travel schedule, all the way to the Super Bowl, literally to kick off. Like a political and, campaign, a, a path to victory. Yeah. And, and Ray mentioned that the other day and, and that, that, that and it worked in the sense that the players it made it very real for the player. Okay, yeah, we're going to the playoffs. Yeah, let's fight hard. But it was okay. We have a plan for this. We can do this. And that was obviously a very confident team. We are at that time on a what eight or nine game winning streak. And 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 the path wasn't going to be easy. We were a wild card team, and we're going to have to do it on the road. And it it made it real. So so yeah, that that, that ended up being a good thing. And players point back to that, that, that you, you always got to give your, your, your coworkers and your troops the sense of, yes, we can do that, and this is how we're going to do it. That, gives it, that makes it real and tangible. It's something they could hold that said, yes, we can do this, and this is how we're going to do it. You know, as much as I've looked through pictures lately because I was doing that during the holidays and flipping through stuff, I have not looked at my book. I have not fingered through to see what I wrote. It's probably been since the last eight years ago we won the Super Bowl, whatever it was that I looked at it. I'm just off the top of my head. The one thing I would say about being around you, and I know I wrote this now that I'm thinking about it, was that you really had fun with this. You, I mean, like, whatever the perception was of your using big words for the Dundalk crowd or uh, the arrogance or whatever those things were, you had a cheekiness about it. You, like, it was, you had fun with this. Whether he's in the, the Banshee and the Spear thing, you had fun. And I, I'll be honest with you, man. Like, I've been around sports a long time. I've been around a lot of really miserable pricks. You know, miserable SOBs, all that. You were never, like, you, you were fun. I mean, there were times maybe, you know, like the, the, after the Detroit game, the, that wasn't fun. But you, were, you always made it fun for the players. And I don't know that it feels as much fun 20 years later. Does, I, that, I just, does that make sense? Do you yeah, feel that when you see these teams? I just teams? don't think it's productive to be – I've always kind of followed the philosophy that I'm going to take my job seriously. I'm going to take what I do seriously, but I'm not going to, to let it define me, nor am I going to take myself too seriously from the standpoint of you can get awful wound up in it. And I understand, you know, the thing today, the, the Belichickian, you know, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to minimize the contact because I don't want to do this. So I'm not going to give you any answers and I'll only do this because I have to. And I'm fo by way of saying, I'm just focused on the next game. That's all we're doing. And, and uh, that's no way to live life to me. And, and, and it's not real uh, because your players aren't going to be able to do that. Whether it's uh, dealing with the media or out going to the grocery store or the cleaners or whatever. I mean, this is part of life. And, and, uh, and it primarily dealing with the media. And some people, you know, took to it. Some didn't. Some thought, you know, the arrogant, egotistical, and who does he think? Okay, well, that's fine. It's cool. At the end of the day. But you were never, like, wound tight. Like, like I see a, a Bruce Arians to some, you know, like, feels like, and he's had a lot of issues in his life and whatever. It feels like one of the reasons Brady wanted to go down there was he wanted to be around somebody that was having a good time or at least a perception there would be some fun. And I guess that can bring us into talking about, this game next week, but there are so many different styles of leadership, right? Sure. And which is interesting because you're, you're right. When you look at uh, any number of different successful coaches uh, in any league, but let alone the NFL, uh, and and you've got to recognize obviously shared experiences. The paths aren't all that different. Whether you're a Bill Belichick, a Tom Coughlin, a Brian Billick, a Tony Dungy, a, a Bill Cower. Uh, Andy Reid, I mean, Anna and I went, both went to BYU. So you have shared experiences, and you certainly understand what the other individual is going through. It's like I say, it's why movie stars marry other movie stars, because they're the only ones that really know what that world is about. And, and so certainly you think, well, they, there would be a certain uniformity about the way, but you, you talk about diverse personalities, me versus a Tony Dungy. Are you kidding me? You know, a Bill Cower versus Nandy. I mean, 
there are a lot of different personalities in doing this job, which is great. Uh, and that's, that's, that's the great, it, but just, it tells you there's no one size fits all. It feels like it's harder now. Do you agree with that? Or I mean, cause I think about like Marvin coming back and getting the job he interviewed recently. I think about what Vermeil did in coming back or a guy like you, you know, that if you were to come back, it, it feels like literally a different job. And it's certainly a different job from my perspective, covering it. Now that I think about all these people, you know, all the Woodson's and Sarah Gooses that are going to be coming on the show this week and you and Jack and who's still in the game and, and, and your brother-in-law, Mike Smith, who's going to be joining us this week. That, that it's it's really really different, and I'll probably talk to Jack and Mike a lot about how different it yeah. is this day. Yeah, this they, day they would be they would be the ones to talk to because they've been in the middle of it more recently. Uh, Marvin is in terms of obviously the college game, but it's a little bit different. Uh, it is it is harder in the sense that you've got to deal with your players and your organization almost individually every single day. The old school Parcellian, my way of the highway and standing atop the organization and throwing down lightning bolts of inspiration and instruction, that, that doesn't work anymore. You know, I always joke, the old, I grew up, my generation was, you know, and, and your generation knows it is. When the coach says what, you say, how high? Well, you say jump. Today it's, well, why? Is that in my contract? Why should I do that? I mean, and, and so – it's more labor intensive because you really do have to reach out almost on a daily basis, touching your players to push and prod. And it's almost like NBA, you know, my son-in-law obviously played in the NBA for a number of years. And it was interesting to watch that dynamic, much smaller, more games, the personalities, the guaranteed money. It was a different locker room. Um, it's a small and, classroom. Yeah, and, 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 the, and, and the teacher, the coach, in the NBA, obviously, it is all about that. It is nonstop because the strategy and tactics of basketball are, you know, I remember Rick Pitino saying, well, there's really only about four or five times during the game where I'm going to do something that tactically could make a difference. So 99% of the job is dealing with the players and getting them in the right space mentally and emotionally and this, that, and the other. And it seems like the NFL's kind of, kind of getting that way all, but with, a, you know, a larger landscape in terms of the number of people. It's fascinating. When I was working on the book right after you left the Ravens, I, I never finished the book, but I have droves of it. I sat with Frank Cush, uh, one of your predecessors wow. here in Baltimore. Wow. I went up to the roof at Arizona State on Frank Cush Field at Sun Devil Stadium. Yeah. And I sat up there and he had a little um, a Baltimore Colts pencil container, the, old Colt, the only Colt thing he had in the office. And he said, they got to fear you. They got to fear And here's this little 80-year-old guy that would kick five of our asses, right? And, and they got to fear you. And I think to myself, where Bruce Arians is at this point. Now, I didn't know much about the Buccaneers. I mean, I thought it was nice Tom went down there. I didn't see him play a whole lot. They weren't on. And, and now all of a sudden I'm watching them last weekend. Indomitian Sue, Antonio Brown, Rob Gronkowski, the greatest player of all time, and Tom Brady to come in there. I mean, what a mix to recruit, yeah. right? And then to go out there and make this thing happen and have a chance to win a Super Bowl next week. And it was touch and go. You know, during the course of the season, it was not real smooth. And it wasn't necessarily connecting. So they're questioning that in the relationship. Do you really know what you're doing? Is this Tom's offense? Is it Bruce's offense? Is it Brian Leshwitz's offense? And, gee, it's just not coming together. And so the players are starting. To, then you, you kind of get together. You have a little success. And then now in the playoffs, this team, because it's real. All the things we said, Bruce said we were going to do, and we brought in Tom and this guy and that guy, and they're playing that way. And they're kind of, and Dominic and Sue, who's been a player that's been kind of up and down in terms of his motivation, seems very focused, very intent, because now it's real to him. So just what I was I remember a guy to, named Sam Adams that uh, maybe right, something like right. that happened for but around you get here. Right? To this point now, and it's all good. And it's whatever you want, coach, we're in. You know, and, and so the next two weeks and that focus and, and it's going to be uh, although a bit different because, as you know, the, this week in the Super Bowl, Tampa, literally uh, uh, we'd be going down and the network would have we'd have hundreds, if not thousands, literally of people down in Tampa from production people to studio and the whole nine yards. I don't know what our footprint is this year. It can't be, you know, maybe in the tens of, of, of whatever. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going down. Everything's going to be remote. Uh, there is no radio row per se. I mean, there is, but there, no one's going to be there. 
Um, Kansas City's not going into like Thursday or Friday, right? Did I read that? Properly? I think it's even later than that. Yeah. So, so it's going to be different in that regard, uh, but it's still going to be the Super Bowl. Head coach Brian Billick joining us here on behalf of the Living Classrooms Foundation, uh, still our partner and uh, trying to have some fun through this thing and to spend some time with his grandkids out in Ohio. You know, I want to talk to you about Andy Reid uh, because I, I know Andy's a special guy in your life. And, look, you had your tree, right, whether it's Marvin and Mike and Rex and Jack still running around in, in Washington. I see your Jed Fishes, and I see your, you know, all the people that have been around that you hired many, many moons ago that have, have uh, swum upstream. Andy Reid's in that spot now, right, where uh, whether it's Harbaugh or Spagnola or all these guys that are floating around, guy he had to beat last week, another chance to win a championship for him. And I know anybody that knows Andy feels special about Andy, but to, to have a special quarterback at this point, this is an incredible game. It really sucks oh. to not be there. It's the first Super Bowl I'm missing since 94, yeah. Coach. So, you know, it's been almost whatever. It's been 27 years, whatever. Uh, this is one of those ones that I almost want to talk a lot about it. Mahomes and Brady, this, this probably won't happen again generationally for what it represents for the league. Um, and and I, I just – I think it's a wonderful matchup for the league. I'm looking forward to watching all the commercials next week. The contrast, you know, like you said, it's so unique. A, a you know, Codlock guaranteed Hall of Famer, winning a championship quarterback of all time when it comes to the Super Bowl era. Uh, uh, Nate Burleson on, on Good Morning Football for the network, I like the term that he used. It's the goat versus the kid, meaning what's a baby goat? It's a kid. You know, so it's, it's the goat, the greatest of all time, Tom Brady, and this kid who has the potential to be the greatest of all time, I mean, is playing spectacularly. Uh, and I know Andy. Andy. Andy's a good man, as everybody will outline. Andy's very faith-based. Uh, and at this stage in his career, at his age, he's got to have, you have a deeper, broader appreciation for things and what a gift it is to have a talent like uh, uh, Mahomes and to just watch this whole thing transpire. What, you know, just, just the combination of his talent, what's around him, whether it's Kelsey and Hill and uh, Malcolm, the whole group, um, and then what Andy and Eric the enemy are doing in terms of the creativity of the offense and it's, uh, it's fun to watch, and it's going to be a good game. Uh, it's hard to go against Kansas City because they can just be so unstoppable on offense. You can do it. You, just the things you have to do, it's a long list, and you've got to do them all. You can't just do four out of the five. You've got to not give up the big plays. You've got to come up and tackle well in the open field. You've got to hold on to the ball. Uh, you've got to be efficient. You've got to score touchdowns, not field goals. You've got to get probably a turnover or a special teams play to either score or put you in scoring position. So they're beatable, but the problem is you got to do all those things. I know uh, you're no stranger to the purple shirt. I see you breaking down plays. I think you've spent as much time looking at the Ravens the last couple of years uh, uh, back here to Baltimore on the broadcast and whatnot. Some Lamar thoughts. I mean, bring me up to speed on where you are in the offseason. I mean, I thought Eric's press conference was the best of all the hostage videos all year long. I learned some stuff. They're going to try to sign Lamar and Mark Andrews and where they are in the offseason and wide receivers and play calling and all of that. This is their time to take a look at everything they've done and figure out how they can make the next two steps they're going to need to make in right. order to beat, as you called him, the kid out in Kansas City. Yeah, it's tough because, uh, to use the analogy, the Buffalo Bills right now, just like the Green Bay Packers, are scouring through, okay, what, what do we got to do to get better? What went wrong? Well, first off, not a lot went wrong. It was a hell of a season. It's hard to, to keep that in context because of the emotion of it, the disappointment of losing. And it's not like you got to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Oh, we got to change all these things. Clearly, you got to identify where do we need to be a little bit better. And in terms of the AFC, it's real simple. What do we have to do to beat Kansas City? Because, because they're, with Mahomes and the way they're doing it, they're, they're going to be there a while. Um, and so what do we have to do uh, that, to take that next step? And, and for the Ravens, obviously, there's not a lot wrong. I mean, it was a pretty damn good season. And this team weathered some tough times. They were a mentally, emotionally stronger team, I thought, they, than, than last year, just because of the experiences. What they know – what they thought they knew about Lamar has been re-established for them. Lamar is who Lamar is, a spectacular, unique talent. Lamar is not going to be a 
650, 600 throw, beat you from the pocket guy. He just is not going to be that guy. He never will be. His skill set lies elsewhere. So we can win with that. We know that. It's a unique talent. So we got to wrap things around that. They're talking about, well, they need a receiver. Okay, yeah, that would help. Is that kind of weird and fun for you? If you could go be the OC for this team for a couple of weeks without having to deal with all the other crap, if you can just draw the plays oh, up. Yeah. With, th- this is fun for a guy like you, right? Sure. Uh, the, the, just like for Andy. Can you imagine how, okay, what, what are we going to do now? You know, it, 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 Did you have that with Randall Cunningham a little bit in, in a different skill set to something for me to have that kind we, of year? We had it in Minnesota because of the unique athletes we had. It was so fun because I knew no matter who, who we played, how good the defense. We had an answer for whatever you wanted to do to stop us. Yeah, mismatches. Yeah, you know, if you want to stop Randy Moss going on the top and you're going to rotate in two and rotate, great. I got Chris Carter. I got Jake Reed. I can run the ball with Robert Smith and Leroy Hoard. Uh, you want to stop Chris on the inside. I got Randy over the top. So whatever it is, whatever trick, whatever it is you thought you were going to do to try to stop us, I, I have an answer for you. That's kind of the way Mahomes is. It's kind of like what Brady is right now. Uh, that's the fun thing to watch Brady evolve. They still want to kind of – they want to do – they've evolved to where we can play small ball, but when the big play presents itself, Brady, I'll take it. And he has been brilliant. And he's got guys that whether it's Godwin, Evans, uh, 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 A.B. hopefully playing this week, uh, next week. Uh, you got Gronk in there to throw in. So you've got options. And, and you've got a, a guy with the experience like Tom Brady. What on a football field is he not seen? So if you do this – oh, I know what this is. Well, I got this guy on the post back here. Uh, okay, this isn't going to happen. Oh, I got a guy on a crossing route over here. And just boom, boom. Okay, boom. He's, he's always got a place to go. Um, and Patrick Mahomes is learning, obviously, but is intuitive the way he makes things happen. He, you know, he's just he's so unique. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun because it just – it opens everything up. You're not trying to – you don't have to manufacture every single call. That's the difference between – adequate quarterbacks and really good quarterbacks you know uh, uh, Greg Roman's got to be loving it because no matter what he calls if it's not right Lamar is probably going to kind of make it right so I don't have to be perfect every single time on every single call but it's also hard in that you don't have a whole lot of control right I mean is the OC things are not going on schedule in a Lamar offense there's too many decisions that are made on the field right by design it's the same thing in Kansas City I mean Andy's can take great comfort knowing they've designed half of what happens. <laughs> but the other just is – and you It's like it real going, life. We design oh, it and then it happens. <laughs> we got we got this uh, – we got this kind of – oh, that was fun. Look at that. That was great. <laughs> oh, we snapped the ball. Here comes a pandemic. Last thing for you, Coach, because I don't, I don't have you on much. And I, diversity in coaching, I, I don't need to even say to you, a man who had – Marvin Lewis is a DC and had Ozzie Newsom as a boss and like all the way through all of this, but where the league is and the look of this really is stenchy. Well, here, here's the, for me and, and asking me a 66 year old white guy, I mean, <laughs> what, 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 but I will say this, certainly like everything regard to social justice, it's important that we have the conversations and that we recognize it. Now, the actual implementation of it, I've always said, don't, you want to find out what the real issue is? You're wasting your time asking me. Last year, and I'm, I, I'm close, to, on, I think we had six or seven minority coaches, head coaches last year, over the last two years. Only one had a minority coordinator. So what needs to be asked is to get the minority head coaches, guys that have gone through this process and know it firsthand and saying, what are we not doing that you only have one minority coordinator? And you'll ask them, say, well, I just hired the best guy available. Okay, great. Granted, that's all any of us did. Why are there not more minority candidates to be the best guy available? Don't ask me. It's those guys that you need to ask to saying, what is it that you're not seeing in some of these candidates and how do we nurture that? Coach, love you, appreciate you. And, uh, you know, 
20 years, I, I see that bottle of uh, wine that the Ravens sent out. Right. Everybody, I see it behind you. Everybody, uh, you know, on the team has been sharing some stuff. I think it's a shame that everybody can't get together and gather. I've yeah. been a part of a few of those gatherings. I want to say it again. It was one of the greatest things that ever happened in my life, certainly still 20 years later. Having some fun with it. You know what yeah. I mean? Having some fun with it. And uh, I appreciate you. And take care of All yourself. Right, Stay safe out there. Wear a mask. Get a shot. You're old enough now. Let them I am. I'm in uh, ne next week. All right. Well, that's what they, that's what they're saying in Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's because we, they know how to work in here in Ohio. You need to get out. You need to get into a state that knows how to run this thing. We'll talk about Jim Jordan and others lately. Hey, I would have voted for Kasich. You know that. Appreciate you, Bill, Brian. Hi. Brian Billick, our, uh, not, Bill, not Bill Belichick, as he's often called. Coach Billick, our partner on behalf of the Living Classrooms Foundation, of course, joining us. 20 years ago, this happened, and, and this happened. And uh, you know, I even asked Coach about the, uh, the, the, the uh, crazy picture here coming out. Coach had nice loafers that day, too. World champions. Did it once, did it twice, we'll do it again. We are WNST.net, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking. Baltimore, positive, and Super Bowl wins.